Okay, today we are going to talk about another cool WPF layout control, and that's the dock panel. Let's go ahead and create our dock panel. And let's add rectangle. Uh, before we go any further, I'd like to change a property called last child fill to false, and we'll get to that later. So let's continue with our rectangle. Let's get a fill of red. And this guy I want to place on the left side of the dock panel. So with dock panel, we have four sides where we can place our uh, child elements plus the center piece. So we can split it into five pieces. All right, so I want this to be ducked in the uh, left. So I'm going to set the duck panel duck property to left and give this guy a width of 200. So now we have the red on the left hand side. The next rectangle I want to place on top. I'm going to give this a background or fill of green and duck this to top. This guy, I'm going to need to set the height and give this a value of 100. All right. And next rectangle, I'm going to give this a blue fill and duck this to, to the right. And again, I need width. Give this 200 again. And the blue is good to go. The next guy, I'm going to give this a fill of purple and duck this to the bottom. All right, and the height is going to be 100 as well. So we have all four sides taken. And the last child. Let's add another rectangle and give us a fill of gray. And we already use all four sides, so we don't have to set anything for this guy. Okay, but I want this gray to take up the rest of the space. Um, I can, if I set the width, it's not going to do that. So to do that, actually, we need to change this last child false to true. The reason I didn't, by default, is true. The reason I made it false because the behavior may confuse you. So that's why I changed it to false to begin with. I'm going to make another. Another example with that set to true, just in a bit, but um, I initially wanted to show you with, with it set to false. So here are a couple of things to pay attention. The order we place these elements is kind of important. That sets the, uh, <clears throat> it tells us where, how much space it takes. So the red one, since it was the first child, it takes up the whole height. And the next one we added was the green one. It starts from the red and gets the rest of the space. And likewise with the blue. And lastly, we add the last, the fourth one, fourth side, which was the bottom. And as you can see, the bottom takes up the space between the red and the blue. Now, if I change the order, Let's say if I want to blue to be the second child. Let's copy and paste. Now you'll see the blue takes up the whole width as well. Uh, you may say, well, what if I want this top and bottom takes take up the whole width? In that case, we want those to be the first and the second childs. All right, so you've got plenty of options to work with. All right, so now I'm going to comment this out. 
and recreate this from the beginning. This time, with without setting the last child failed by default again, it's true. So I don't have to set it. So let's say, uh, let's add the first rectangle and again give it a fill up red and duck this to left. Give it a width of 200 and let's see what happens. So now this is the first child and at the same time it's the last child. So it tries to fill the whole space available. It can't because we set the width. If I remove the width from here, it's going to fill the rest of the space. Okay. So, but if I add the next child, let's go with green again and dock this to top and give it a height and close this. Now it pushes the first child to the space that it, we already assigned to, which is left. And it tries to give the rest of the space to, because again, the last child is fill, last child fill is set to true by default. So if I did this, nothing changes because it's already true by default. Uh, okay. All right. So I don't have to really set it. All right. So again, if I add the next child, and dock this to right, it's going to behave the same way. Okay. And same with the, uh, I'm actually copy and paste this and just change the color and the uh, duck position. Let's change this to yellow, duck this to bottom. And likewise, same behavior. And last but not least, if I add the last child, rectangle, let's get a fill of black and close this out. Now it's going to allocate the rest of the space to black. Now, what if I don't want to use this all five places? Well, you definitely can, can do that. You can use as many places as you need to. Let's say I only want to use the left and the uh, uh, allocate the rest of the space to black. In that case, I can use just only two child elements and I'm done with it. All right, so uh, that's the dark panel. Uh, let me go ahead and um, show you one last example that I did earlier. I copy and paste this from here. And uncomment this. That's a uh, whoopsie. Okay, so here I have uh, the main dock panel, the whole area. I have two stack panels, on one on the left, one on the right, with a couple of text blocks inside it. So the stack panels here, and I have two text blocks in, in there. And again, with the next one, you can tell by the height. You can tell this is the first child or this is the second child or vice versa. It could be either way since they are opposite part of the dark panel. It doesn't matter which one comes first because by the time you're adding, you're done adding this too. These are two elements. There's no 
other siblings around to border them. So they will take up the whole height. All right, and then I have a text block here, an image here, and another text block. Let's run this, just to give you a different perspective, okay? All right, so that beautiful layout uh, that we can use as, a, you know, we can use this as a list box template, you know, item template as well, if you, you know, if something that we want to do. All right, so basically that's it about the dog panel. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.